The world will note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, a military base. If Japan does not surrender, bombs will have to be dropped on her war industries, and unfortunately, thousands of civilian lives will be lost. After the first atomic bombs were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a fear of being helpless to atomic annihilation and having no means of defense against nuclear weaponry arose. This fear was worsened through the following nuclear arms race and spread through Cold War propaganda. In order to combat the feelings of helplessness, many Americans participated in planning and executing safety and security measures such as duck and cover drills and fallout shelter construction while the government initiated designated survivor protocols. At the start of World War II, the Manhattan Project led by J. Robert Oppenheimer developed the first atomic bombs known as Little Boy and Fat Man. The project started in 1939 with only two bombs in creation, but that was just the beginning. According to Khan Academy, within 10 years of the project's launch, over 2,600 nuclear bombs had been made by many different nations. As World War II continued, the United States did not receive any notion of surrender they had demanded from Japan and dropped atomic bombs on the towns of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Many people, however, were opposed to the idea of nuclear war. In a letter to President Truman, many esteemed scientists and researchers, such as those who worked on the original creation of these bombs, stated their opposition to actual applications of these weapons in war. Within the petition, they mentioned their fears of being unable to protect themselves and others from atomic bombs, as well as the fear that sudden annihilation would be too powerful and immoral in the hands of humans. Regardless of their fear of being helpless in the near future, nuclear weaponization continued to grow, thus opening a gateway to a new era of destruction. In 1947, the United States entered into the nuclear arms race with Russia. Both sides began competing to develop and improve large nuclear weapons. Circulation of nuclear weapons also began to increase as both sides struggled to gain control and have an edge on these massive destructive weapons. In 1951, statistician George Gallup conducted a public opinion survey that asked Americans if they would feel fairly safe if an atomic war were to start. Half of the respondents said they would not feel safe, and the other half either said they felt safe or had no opinion on the matter. In communities with populations larger than 100,000, 56% of people felt unsafe and only 34% felt they would be safe in an atomic war. As tensions between the two countries intensified, a surmounting fear of helplessness within the American population began to express itself through literature, television, and advertisements. For example, a short story by Ray Bradbury from 1950 titled There Will Come Soft Rains described a post-atomic war world where only barren husks of automated machinery continued to survive as all of humanity was wiped out from atomic annihilation. Only shadows of people were left as evidence humans had existed. These shadows described in the story were based off actual imprints scorched into the walls and floors of Hiroshima after the first atomic bomb was deployed. Many inhabitants of Hiroshima were rendered defenseless to the blast and were subjected to large fires, shockwaves, and radiation exposure. As the fear of nuclear warfare heightened, propaganda that provided information on how to survive a nuclear blast was spread throughout the United States so that its citizens would not feel as helpless as they previously feared they were. Such propaganda included films like Bert the Turtle, made in 1952, which was used as security in schools to help prepare them in the event of a nuclear explosion. In the film, students were instructed to duck under their desks and take cover to protect themselves, even though this would not protect them from a nuclear explosion as well as they would want. A pamphlet titled Facts About Fallout contained information on the detection of nuclear fallout and how to stay safe in extreme radioactivity. The pamphlet used rhymes and cartoons like Bert the Turtle to try and make the idea of the actual event seem less threatening in order to calm the fears of the American people. In some cases, more drastic measures were taken in response to the fear of being helpless during the Cold War. Booklets in 1962 about fallout shelter construction were sent out as government resources from the Department of Defense. The ads detailed the many ways you could build and design your own personal fallout shelter. Many of the fallout shelters were made to protect people in the event that a nuclear blast occurred when citizens were at home, and they were used as a way to escape and survive nuclear fallout. The fear of being rendered helpless in a nuclear attack extended to the government through the designated survivor protocols which were mandated in the United States federal government as a means of defense. These appointed cabinet members were instructed to stay far away from the president and other government officials in events with high security threats, such as State of the Union addresses. In the event of a nuclear bomb or any other extreme attack on the government, the designated survivor would assume the presidential position. Even though the Cold War was drawn to a close in 1991, threat of nuclear war lives on and safety and security measures continue to be updated as the fear of being helpless continues to consume the American people, even if the threat is not imminent. The Department of Homeland Security continues to update civilian instructions for various disasters, which includes staying inside and avoiding food and drink that could be contaminated with radiation when a nuclear fallout occurs. Today, 
threat and fear of being helpless is more pertinent than ever. World events such as the recent attacks on Iran and other threats from places like North Korea or Russia have forced the doomsday clock to be updated to 100 seconds to midnight, the closest it has ever been. The significance of this event proves the necessity to look at past events, including World War II and the Cold War, in order to inform how we react to the lack of control of the political atmosphere and the demise of the intermediate-range nuclear forces. The questions of when and how our humanity will end still resonate with us today. Even in popular culture, such as movies like Wolverine or video games like Fallout, the fear of nuclear war is present within our society. Today, we cope with these fears just like Americans in the Cold War, by being as prepared as possible to defend ourselves. Another example of how we can use Americans' reactions to their fears in the Cold War to inform our response to fear today is in the case of gun violence. Just like the helplessness felt in the 1940s to 1960s regarding nuclear war, today, gun violence remains an issue leaving some students to feel unsafe in the classroom. Currently, instead of duck and cover drills, we are prepared for the event of an active shooter and what to do in those types of situations, such as barricading the classroom or turning the lights off. Nevertheless, fear still remains present in America today and these fears continue to manifest itself in society's efforts to have a security blanket against these threats. Just as what was seen in the Cold War and World War II, the concern of nuclear annihilation has generated the fear of being helpless in America. More importantly, we can use this fear to inform our thinking today by recognizing how many Americans implemented safety precautions and forms of defense to best protect themselves and their fellow citizens in the event of disaster.